While precisely diagnosing a problem may not always be possible, this Debaco University video intends to help you classify problems of cannabis plants in general categories so you can better direct your efforts to reduce their negative impact on your plants. All right, let's get into how to classify a problem with cannabis plants. So while many things can go wrong, uh, the goal is to try to classify the issue to help the diagnosis process along with the potential corrective action to be taken. The main categories covered will be biotic and abiotic, underbiotic or living, diseases and insects. Abiotic will look at nutrients, spray products, moisture, temperature, as well as physical damage. So starting with biotic, well biotic is again living. These uh, typically refers to a broad range of disease, insects, or animals. While biotic means living, viruses are typically included within this group. It also considered fungi, bacteria, protist animals, archaea, all these are classified under biotic factors. Now disease is probably the most obvious one that most people go to. Here we see some powdery mildew getting started. Diseases can have varying degrees of impact depending on the variety being grown in some cases, but not always. Some varieties may have different levels of resistance to some disease, especially when the pressure is low or when it initially comes in. Diseases also tend to spread over time with the rate being impacted by how favorable the environment is for that particular disease. Then there's also insects. Here we see some aphids on the underside of this cannabis leaf. Insects can have um, hatches, meaning their numbers can increase drastically in a very short period of time. Scout scouting the shadier portions of the plant is a good starting point. Controlling insects is important as some, particularly aphids, pictured here, can vector diseases and viruses as well. Then we get to some abiotic factors. So these are non-living factors that can impact plant growth and development. Typically, the rate and extent of damage of plants is uniform across varieties, as also ages of the plant. Abiotic issues tend not to slowly spread, but occur kind of at a point in time. It could be a drastic change in temperature, sunlight, uh, climate, um, humidity, things like that. So let's start with nutrients, looking at nutrients to begin with. Note that these can be impacted by pH as well as concentration. Being able to recognize deficiencies is important, but at the same time, understanding how much to feed the plant is key to avoid potential nutrient toxicities, which oftentimes with cannabis tends to be more of an issue. Keeping records and following manufacturers' suggestions are both good starting points to ensure you're not going into the toxic range or the deficient range when it comes to nutrients. Then we get to spray products. Growers may have uh, to apply control products to their um, leaves. This can offer very efficient and, um, and efficient, uh, effective coverage, but at the same time it can risk damaging tender leaf surfaces, particularly your newer leaves. Watch the concentration, method, and timing of your application. You want to avoid forceful applications at high light intensity times as well to reduce the chance of getting sort of grower-induced spray damage to your particular leaves. Then we have moisture to consider. So growers tend to overwater their plants and this reduces aeration within the root zone. Since plants' roots need oxygen, overwatering can cause plants to drown and also cause stunting of plants. Underwatering though can cause wilting, which if caught early can be corrected. And remember, a plant's water demands will change as it ages. So as it gets older, more, more roots, larger top structure, the demand or the amount of irrigation it will require is going to be greater. Then we get to temperature. So when we're looking at different temperatures, more is not better. The goal is to keep plants in a natural daily rise and fall of temperatures. Extremes will cause plant stresses. While outdoor environment regulation of this may not be possible, other measures such as increased irrigation frequency or potential use of shade netting should be considered when possible to reduce plant stresses in an outdoor environment. Also keeping an idea of the high and low temperature, uh, the humidity as well, kind of that 24 hour monitor is a great suggestion. Temperatures above 9 degrees Fahrenheit and below 55 degrees Fahrenheit will be outside the acceptable range and will hinder plant performance overall. Lastly, we get to physical damage um, and this may be easy to say, but be careful around plants, especially when pruning and also scouting and also transporting. Some growers simply are just tougher on their plants than others, so be mindful if you're one of those growers that just has a heavy hand. When transporting plants, this can cause damage to the branches, maybe as we can see here, and try to implement or reduce the chance of that impact has on the plant. 
If growing outdoors, wind can also cause physical damage, so be sure to provide plant supports if your plants will be growing in a large size where this may be a likely source of damage. So hopefully this allows you to generally classify potential problems you might be seeing with your plant, and then you can further refine a more specific diagnosis once you have the proper category determined, and hopefully this video here on Tobacco University helped you categorize your problems.